Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting and today you're joining me for week 3 of my 100 days bike ride challenge. Got me mum's bike in the background here. Let's get stuck in. This is going to be my first proper sit down and chat to you all about this undertaking. So we are on day 18 as I'm filming this and I've got to say, even with 82 days left to go, sounds a long time. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I know there's been issues with the bike and what I fear with it basically falling apart beneath me. And we'll talk a little bit more about the current issues that could be potentially serious as the uh, weeks and months go by. But basically, I've got to say, in terms of actually getting out there and riding, it's been so nice to just be like, right, I'm doing 15 miles a day, no matter what, whether it's raining, whether it's beautiful sun, whatever time of day, I'm going to find time to do those miles and get out there. And I've really enjoyed, especially this last week, where it's basically pretty much... I would say up until the last two days, they've all been midnight rides and 6am rides. So I've been having that real, real experience that's taken me right back to when I used to live on the boat and I'd be biking in and out of down all these country roads at ludicrous times in the morning. I mean, there's times, like I say, like I'd be setting out to go back to the boat after 2am and stuff like that. And although it's definitely not something that I would want to do every day, just doing it and doing it as part of this challenge and going down these old roads that I haven't been down for a long, long time. I mean, now it's it's well over a year since I had a boat. And obviously there's certain places that I didn't go to for a while before I sold the boat. So getting back out onto some of these country lanes and that, it's just it's absolutely fantastic and doing it in the total dead of night when you literally go for like 10 miles and you don't see a car or a human being and it's it's one it's so nice and it's put me in mind of why I loved going to and from the boat and then I think sometimes how difficult I made my life where I would I mean, I could have stopped at me mum's or stopped at me friends, but there's all these times where it, between my days of work, if I'd finished work at 10 o'clock the one night, I would still bike off out to the boat and get to the boat just before midnight and then bike back in, like wake up at, I don't know, seven in the morning maybe, and then bike back into town to get into work for nine the next day and stuff like that. Like, it's put me in mind and really reminded me just how great it was and just how much what I always said about having the boat, that I didn't buy a boat to live on a boat and never leave the boat. I bought on a boat, I bought a boat, sorry, to be able to be out in the outdoors and the bike riding in and out, making my life unnecessarily difficult and hard work. It was great because it was that hard work of pedaling and I know I had like heavy bags to carry and all that stuff. But just getting out there and seeing shooting stars again under the star, oh, it's just taking me back in time. And it's, I really, I can't tell you how much I've loved it. And so doing the midnight rides has been great. But then as well, doing the 6am rides as well, that's something I can't tell you how brilliant that is. And again, going down all these deserted country lanes where you've got the sun still rising in the sky and all of the orange sunlight bathing everything and the mist rising on the fields. It's so brilliant. It's absolutely fantastic. I honestly can't tell you how much I've loved it. Um, so that's something I've got to say. Uh, oh, hopefully I've put on the screen at some point already. If not, here are the last few weeks of uh, cycling distances and what have you. Uh, we're well over 200 miles at this point. Um, but yeah, basically the actual experience I'm really, really enjoying. It's made life a little bit tricky because it's taking like an hour and a half to two hours a day to actually get all of this cycling done but what I've done the last couple of days is biked out to Chirk just over the canal where I used to moor up for my winters by the Poacher's Pocket pub and there's a model shop on a little industrial estate just by where I used to moor up and so I've been out there twice a day, once yesterday and once today and that with a little bit of creative cycling um, and slight route alteration makes into a nice sort of 15 mile round route. So just going out there and buying a few bits and pieces for a model railway that I'm building and then coming back to town, it's been really great and really nice to do that as well. I mean, how idyllic does that sound? Like tootling out down the country lanes to go to the model shop to buy little railway track to then tootle back down the country lanes and get in the spare room here and start building and figuring out, hmm, 
really wish I'd bought that piece now. Better go back tomorrow. Um, but you get the general gist. I've been trying to, like I say, make the most of this experience and make the most of this challenge, and I'm really enjoying it. The bike itself is the weakest link in this challenge, as you might have seen in my previous vlogs, how I've had pedals falling off, I've had the flipping crank arm actually attaching the pedal to the bike falling off. Uh, but, well, I'll show you, I'll cut to a clip now that shows you the current issues that could be uh, some problems over the next few weeks and coming months of this challenge. Because we've still got 82 days, I mean, we've still got almost three months of this challenge left, remember. So, cut to that clip now. So, I would say that my only major problems with the bike now are the fact that this pedal is, it's difficult to try and illustrate it here, let's see. You can see that the pedal, the plastic outer shell, is really loose. As you can, yeah, you can see it's got a lot of wobble in like 360 degree motion. But the actual central canister or whatever you call it with the bearings and everything in, the actual part that's the load bearing element of the pedal is solid and still solidly attached to the bike. So I'm not too concerned about that. Although there are times, because this is the side I naturally put my weight on if I'm stood up on the pedals, where it'll just shift a little bit as I'm going around like a roundabout or something. And it just gives you that little bit of a wobble, that little concern. Because obviously I'm used to all of the years of cycling, of never having any play in these. It's even just a tiny bit like that is enough to give me a little wobble. Now my other issue, and this could be a, a game stopper at some point. I just stung myself on these nettles. <laughs> the big issue that I could well have as we look on the back wheel here is and it's going to be a difficult one to illustrate but hopefully you can tell that there's a good bit of play in the wheel there and that's the wheel moving with, well I don't know exactly where basically it's solidly attached on either side to the bike itself but something with the actual bearings and the actual internal uh, element of the hub there is obviously not quite lined up right and has got a lot of play in it I mean that, to say that that should be absolutely solid and that my safety depends on this bike holding together that's a lot more wobble than i would want to see in a wheel ever under any circumstances so we'll have to see what happens with that if it gets worse or not but that's definitely not something that i personally am too pleased about but equally i don't want to start spending more and more money because obviously with this you'd have to have well it's not just like a front wheel with a plain uh, thing you've got the sprocket and all that stuff here um, so yeah, those are my two concerns with the bike itself. As for myself and my own fitness for this challenge, I would say in terms of stamina and motivation and all the rest of it, I've got no issue and obviously, like I say, coming from the boating area when I'd be out in all sorts of weathers and falling off me bike in the ice in some like bitterly cold mornings and stuff like that before going to get, well, when I was cycling into work and that. The weather and the, the motivation and the distance isn't really an issue. The only thing I will say with my own personal health that could affect this challenge going forward is my left knee. Now, I don't want to diagnose myself with anything here. It's just an ache. It's like it's not a sharp pain. It's just a dull ache. But it's exactly the sort of symptoms that my dad had with his sciatica, where basically I would say... The best way I can describe it is it's a it's an aching sort of almost not necessarily pulsing but almost that sort of sensation just in the back of my left knee uh, and then up sort of the back of me leg to the top and like the the top of me bum cheek I would say is the best way I can describe it. Now last week it was getting so bad that I was starting to worry about the challenge. I was starting to think Mm, this this isn't a good sign. This could be some sort of problem that we. This could be stopping play at some point here. But I've got to say, in the last couple of days, it's got much better, and it's. I'm not too concerned about it at the moment. But obviously, doing this, uh, not so much the sustained biking or distance biking, but the regular right is two hours of biking or up to two hours of biking a day for a hundred days. That's sort of making me, well, it's not giving me a chance to rest in the way that if I went on my bike for a big, like, 30-mile ride, and then it's like, ooh, flipping heck, got an aching leg or whatever, then I would simply not go on my bike for a week or just until I felt that I was completely recovered. And because of this challenge, I haven't got that luxury. So I've got to say, really, 
that's the one thing I'm concerned with. It's fine. It's much better now. And I'm trying not to like slouch when I'm sat in a chair and trying not to be sat up in beds going on the internet and stuff like that. Trying to be sat properly at a desk typing away and trying to do everything properly to stop that developing into a problem further. But that's my only concern is this, whatever this pain is and what have you. And if I continue doing this challenge and it starts to get worse and worse and I'm not able or I don't have an option to give it a rest for a couple of days. But I'm not saying I'm not using that up as using that as an excuse to get out of it. I've got every intention of doing this for another 82 days and then promptly never going on a bike again. Um, but no, in all seriousness, I've got to say, really enjoying this. I really am absolutely loving this little challenge. It's great fun. It's absolutely wonderful to be out on some of these country lanes again and just going on Google Maps and figuring out little routes that I can do. I, I absolutely love it. And I do, it's really rekindled my love for a lot of these half-forgotten places that I've always loved travelling out to and have neglected in recent months. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Check out my other videos for loads more cycling, life on a boat, uh, loads of general bits and bobs regarding the general outdoors and loads of local stuff around Oswestry and Shropshire and Wales, Wrexham, all these sort of places. And if you're really curious, please do consider helping me out and checking out my short books for the Kindle. Loads of books about my life on the canals and all sorts of other bits and bobs. Anyway, until the next time, my friends, have an absolutely fantastic day. Keep it bike-worthy. Keep it interesting, and of course, my friends, farewell.